Did you know that oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen? What? Why are you even telling me this? Because that water you're drinking wouldn't be liquid if it wasn't for this fact. What are you even talking about, man? Think about it. What we call as water is actually H2O, right? It's a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen. But both hydrogen and oxygen are gases at room temperature. So doesn't that make you wonder, how is it that two gases mix together to give us liquid water and not gas? Kinda makes sense. So not the most boring question in the world. Yep. And this is a big deal because if water was not a liquid at room temperature, our oceans wouldn't exist and life as we know it wouldn't have started. Whoa, that is deep, man. So why is water a liquid? Because oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen. All right, all right. So in this video, we'll see what is the meaning of this word electronegativity, what does this statement mean? And how does this make water liquid at room temperature? So to begin, electronegativity is the ability of an atom to pull shared electrons. More electronegativity means the atom can pull the shared electrons more towards itself. Let me give an example. In water or H2O, oxygen, hydrogen share one electron each. So the red dot represents the electron from the oxygen, the, the black dot is the electron from the hydrogen, and these shared electrons now will spend some time near oxygen and some time near hydrogen. But since oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen, this means oxygen tends to pull these shared electrons more towards itself. That means these shared electrons spend more time around oxygen than the hydrogen. Okay, one question. Why do these atoms share electrons? I mean, I don't like to share anything with anyone. Well, sharing is caring, dude. But more importantly, by sharing these electrons, the atoms become stable. What? How? That's actually a good question. But the topic is a little more detailed, so it deserves a separate episode of its own. But remember this, every molecule that exists is because atoms share electrons. Let's take another example. In sodium chloride, both sodium and chlorine share one electron. But chlorine turns out to be way more electronegative than sodium. What does that mean? Well, now that means that the shared electrons get pulled more towards chlorine. So they will spend more time near chlorine than sodium. And because chlorine is so much more electronegative than sodium, practically these electrons almost spend all their time near chlorine. So they have shared electrons, but it's as if chlorine has snatched both the electrons for himself. Ah. So that means electronegativity is kind of like greediness, right? Well, kind of. And sodium chloride reminds me, I had lent my sunglasses to someone about three months ago who promised to return it back the very next day. <laughs> so oxygen is more electronegative, therefore electrons spend more time near oxygen, got it. Moving on, can you tell me how this keeps water liquid? Right. So to understand this, there's only one thing we need to remember. That atoms are always neutral. They have always the equal number of positive protons and negative electrons with them, making it neutral. But in water molecule, because the electrons spend more time towards oxygen, Oxygen gets access to extra electrons, two extra electrons. Therefore, oxygen gets extra negative charge. So because it gets two extra negative electrons, we'll put minus two ch extra charge on oxygen. And because the hydrogen has lost one, el one electron each, we'll put the positive charge for hydrogen. But what's important is that this is not a 
permanent transfer, isn't it? Because the electrons are still being shared, sometime towards oxygen, sometime towards the hydrogen. It's just that it's unequally shared, which is why oxygen ends up getting that electrons, accessing the electrons for more time than hydrogen. So instead of saying it gets a negative two charge, we so usually tend to say a partial negative charge. The delta over there represents partial. So here also it's a partial positive charge, partial positive charge. The partial is only reminding us that it's not a permanent transfer. It's only a temporary negative charge that it gets. As a result, we usually like to write this as a single molecule schematic with a negative sign over here because the oxygen is negative and a positive sign over here. And so such molecules where the positives and negatives are separated out, we call them as dipoles. It's called as a dipole because these are two poles of electricity, positive and negative. And now when you consider a glass of water, which has lots and lots of these H2O dipoles close to each other, look what happens. The positive charge of one dipole, the positive of the hydrogen of one water molecule, starts attracting the negative oxygen of another water molecule. That's what keeps attracting them. And so because of this, there'll be lots and lots of attraction between the positives and the negatives of two neighboring water molecules. It's this attraction that keeps all the molecules together. If it wasn't for this attraction, the molecules would have just moved away from each other like a gas. But because of this attraction, the water molecules are forced to stick together. And that's what makes water a liquid. It's the attraction between the negative oxygen of one H2O molecule and the positive hydrogen of another H2O molecule. And this attraction is given a name, it's called the hydrogen bond. The hydrogen bond. So it's the hydrogen bond that keeps water a liquid at room temperature. Whoa! So because oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen, the electrons spend more time towards oxygen. That's what makes water molecules a dipole, which in turn results to hydrogen bond. And that's what's keeping water liquid at room temperature. Wow. Yep, and not just that, there are so many amazing properties of water due to this hydrogen bond. For example, ice floats on water due to this reason. Water is also a universal solvent due to this reason. So we owe our life to the hydrogen bond. It's all because oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen. All right, but that just raises more questions. Why is oxygen more electronegative than hydrogen? Why are some atoms more electronegative than other atoms? That, my friend, is a story for another day. Stay tuned.